den alla barn Fest upp, fest till barn Vi gör från livets kropp barn Good morning friends. Welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. I'm Mel and I've just finished milking. Uh, we have a really good problem and that is that we have so much milk. Like a ridiculous amount of milk. I had to milk Deirdre this morning because her um, Arda blew up and was full of milk and we can't leave it like that. So she hasn't been milked for like a week, which is really good. It means she's almost almost finished lactating and we'll be able to then prep for her next baby. Now we have a massive amount of milk here. So my fridge is completely chock-a-block. So what I do now is I'll make a little bottle for Sheila and a couple of calf bottles and I'll bring the calves in and they'll all share in some milk. It's great for their vitamins, minerals, gut health, all that sort of stuff, but it's excellent for us as well because it helps keep them nice and friendly and it means that every time we call them, they come when they're called. So I'm gonna pour off the milk, uh, we'll go out and feed the calves and then I've got something extremely exciting happening today. So I've decided I wanna do some little trips around, uh, little um, exploring, journeys if you like um, just looking at some things that you may not think to look at so uh, you, you might have seen the video I did where we went to the York show uh, it's not the type of video I would normally create but I was like let's do something a little bit different so today we are going to go to the 2J emu farm so um, I think that's pretty specky and we are considering maybe getting a little mascot for our farm a little coat of arms Australian native mascot for our farm we're thinking about it but first I'd like to learn a ton about you know why we keep emus uh, what they're good for how to look after them all those sorts of things uh, we're very excited about it so um, come along with us and enjoy this video and we hope we hope that uh, it gives you some value Sheila, Sheila's had her bottle yeah it's fresh but it's warm and straight out the cow. Judson, come on, baby. Yeah, I feel it. You are wet. Did you have your bottle? Look at your tum. Come on, baby. He loves that. Come on, baby. Oh, breakfast time. I'm be the first one there. Breakfast. Come here, big fella. Hold the teat on, remember? There you jetty, go. Jetty, 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 jetty. Your mum normally gives it to you, doesn't she? Look, look, he's got it. He's got it. Look, look. I'll give it to him, baby. Look, look, give look. It. Oh, you little cute patoo. Look, look, she wants some. Want some. He will get it. Jackson's bringing it out. It's okay. Listen to you. Don't pull down. Yeah, mate. that's what happens. That's why I said hang on to it. Oh, axles hurt ya. Oh, yeah. Is that yummy? Yeah, little cutie. Mate. Nick, you tried the game. And your tongue's a bit split still. He's going to split his tongue in a minute. You're about to split my finger in a minute. Oh, Jetson, you little cutie.
So we're going for a little tour and and we're um, going to meet some emus. Do they like this Tagasaski? Excellent, so we have to get a heap of this growing. Well, I can supply you with any amount of little seedlings, they come up like weeds. Yeah, yeah right, well, that's cool. Hello. Hi, Ruby. Lovely, friendly dog, isn't she, Grace? Like Luna. Like Luna. She's a little bit not as naughty as Luna, I think. She should be a pet guard dog. <laughs> Right, there we go. So when we get up here, I'll give you one of these, and you've got to hang on to it very tight, because the emails will try and pull it out of your hand. And I read that you're the oldest emu farm ever. Like, you're the first ever emu farm. Chicken. Uh, no, we're just the oldest. The oldest emu farm was at Waluna, which is where I got mixed up with emus up at Woolena. Oh, okay. I helped start that back in 1976. Yeah, right. right. So the developing interest there was given some emus by the CSIRO in about 1980, and we've had emus here ever since. Yeah, um, And so farming them, yeah. is there other than their oil that you... Everything can be used. Okay. Nothing goes to waste. There's a waiting list of people wanting feathers, um, we could sell all the meat we could get. Um, we're just in the very early stages of another family that's been in emu farming for a long time and haven't been active for a couple of years. Yep. Uh, about getting some sort of abattoir established. The yeah, abattoir right. is the weak spot of the industry. Hello. Right. Yeah. Here, kids. You need to have your own abattoir. To oh, yeah. preferably Hold it on really your tight. Yeah. The Hi. weak spot of the industry is getting the emus from the paddock situation to the back of a Nummy? truck situation. Yeah. <laughs> because emus can Nummy? run at 80 kilometres an hour. Oh. There we go, there's yours. Oh, hi guys. Look at those little, little wings. Yes, Whoop. There we go. So the eggs you sell, they, they use them in restaurants and things yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's two noises you'll hear. One is a boom, boom, boom. That's um, the female. And to make that noise, she's got an airbag at the base of her neck, which she inflates and resonates the sound through to make it sound a bit like a drum. And the burping noise is the male. But as the laying season has just finished, they're not making a lot of noise at all at the moment. So how long is their laying season? Just winter time. So right. end of May, June, July, August, full stop. Okay. That's here. Different areas have different uh, lengths. Down south, they have a longer breeding season. But right, because it's colder. Um, yeah, not so much. And, 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 and are they natural mothers, or do you prefer to incubate? Uh, we incubate because we've got more control, but it's not the mothers. Well, it's the fathers. It's the fathers. So well, that's what good. happens is they, yeah, see what happens? You've got to hang on to that really tight. There's another one for you. Hang on to it really tight. Um, so what happens is they start pairing up in uh, April and May and uh, the female will select an area that she wants to have a nest in. She'll keep the other birds out of that. Uh, so once she starts laying, she can lay an egg every two or three days. And while she's building up a number of eggs in the nest, she'll hide the eggs under leaves and twigs. Um, and so sometimes so effectively that we don't find the, the nest. Right. Um, and she'll keep laying, and usually somewhere between six and twelve eggs. The male, uh, the hormones cut in, and he goes clucky, and he sits on the eggs. When Dad sits on the eggs, he sits on them for fifty-six days, wow, without eating or drinking. Oh, so he's quite skinny at the end no, of it. He starts off very fat, which is, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so, um, and once her first husband goes clucky, mum has a break for a couple of days and then she goes looking for a new dad right. and she can have three mates in the season. Fantastic. It has nothing to do with raising the incubating eggs. Them? Yeah, yeah, sure. If you can get all of that. Have you ever I raised... I, I always like to reassure tourists, it's been a couple of weeks since a tourist lost a finger here, so you're sweet. <laughs> 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 that one's scary. Um, 
so cool. I because emus eyes. don't have fingers so to sense things, yeah, they will eyes. peck at you to see what you feel like. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, um, and obviously not hard though. So um, I was busy telling some yeah. tourists one day how much the pecking didn't hurt, and one reached over the fence and got hold of my ear. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Did you scream? <laughs> yeah. no, the rest of the tour don't in tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it's not nice. Um, so where does the oil come from? Uh, melted fat. So they've got to make the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, okay. So it's really yellowy, isn't it? Really yellowy. Yeah. Apparently it's it quite be. healing. It, it, can, it is. It's yep. a natural anti-inflammatory and it's a very similar oil to human uh, cells and it can be absorbed through your skin into your system. So wow. For aches and pains and things, it's really good. And uh, I hear scarring as well. Yeah. Yep, because yep. I have a really substantial scar from a car accident. Oh, right. Um, and I do want to try it. Right, okay. I heard him burping for me. They're very pretty. I love birds. Okay, yeah, probably lower. You scared them? Hear the thumping? Yeah. want to smash They got long nails. Um, they probably have... reach down the bottom there and pull your thing back through so you can hold it up high. Hey. <laughs> that one too. So, um, yeah. as you can see, emus are pretty closely related to dinosaurs. They've still yes. got their dinosaur feet yes. um, on the Be end of their wings, Ow. which are the little things hanging down in front. They've still got claws left over from dinosaur days. And they've got these wacky feathers. And I'll see if I can are find they kind of related to cassowaries? To what? Cassowaries. Yeah, cassowaries are their closest relation. Uh, they're not related in any way, shape or form to ostriches. None oh. at all. That's interesting. Hey, brother. They're scary, brother. mommy. They have red eyes. Is there a way yes, just brother. from looking at them oh, to Amy. tell Hello, male from female? Yeah, he looks just like no. your beer. Even as an adult? Hey. You've got to wait till they make a noise. If you're lucky, um, you'll see them. What was that? Uh, that's, the that's the male. The male, okay. But the, the irony is that the females can make a noise a bit like it too. But Hi there, beautiful. There. Um, uh, if you're lucky enough, you can detect the bulge at the base of the neck. Yes. And if you certainly, if you're handling them, you can feel a big loose fold of skin at the base of the neck. And, and you can tell that that's a female. Wow. No, they don't want to be touched, obviously. Um, and if you raise them from a chick as like a yeah, if you have them a as a pet, they can actually become quite nice pets, but. Having said that, all emus are individuals, and you'll get some that just Don't simply want to be. won't be a pet. Right. Um, but if they're raised by themselves, they never know what they are, and they can be a bit loopy, yeah, and, right. um, and they'll think they're a dog. And um, one um, family had a pet, and uh, they decided to get another emu to keep it company, and he was hanging back with them and looking at this other emu going, What's this? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I've seen some on YouTube and stuff where they're running around crazy with oh, balls yeah. and. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're quite. They like fun. I don't think they're. the two front feet at the front too. No, the but wings. It looks a bit like feet. Yeah. yeah. The, um, there's a very funny bit of footage on YouTube. Um, someone superimposed cartoon boxing gloves on this emu, yes. and he's um, standing up to a dog, and <laughs> it's only a baby. Go uh... snap another one off, pup. On the outside. You see him doing what for me? They're awesome. Um, do they fight at breeding season? Males. Um, it's mostly threat and bluff, like birds. Yep. Um, they they do occasionally make contact and as with all birds they have a distinct pecking order there are superior birds yep. and if a if a timid bird gets boxed up in a corner uh, by an aggressive lookout you want to be on camera <laughs> let's do it there you are look at you <laughs> um, you don't want to be in a selfie you'll get put over the fence like a throne no no they'll the leap yeah, right, they okay. Can do two metres from a standing jump. Oh, wow, wow, we. That's, that's, that's huge. Hi, mate. Hi. No, oh, Hi. Okay. That, that, that? Boop, boop, boop. Is that the female? male? That is the female. And then the other one's the burp. The burping sound is like the male. Yeah, right. See? That's a cool sound. It's very prehistoric, isn't yeah. it, the sound? 
I spend a lot of time styling their hair. You see, I put blonde tips yeah. on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Here they all come. No, no, no. And do you open like for tourists most weekends, or is there if they're just better off to go on your website? Um, I um, I'm trying to encourage people to come by. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, fingers aren't worms, okay. mate. It's worth seeing. Do you Absolutely. get school groups come and learn about them? Yeah, have done. Not yep. so much recently. What type of natural speed do you have now? Yeah, just watch your fingers. Oh, their eyes are amazing. Yeah. Look at this one here. Stay very st quiet. Yeah, we've got much feed. Yeah, definitely. What type of food do they eat? This here. They'll exist on next to nothing for quite some time. Uh, one emu farm for one reason or other, the owner, funnily enough, ended up in jail. Yeah. And uh, no one was looking after his birds, and I got an SOS from a neighbour coming and have a look at these birds, and they hadn't been fed for weeks. Wow. And they'd done things like strip the bark off trees and wow. eat each other's feathers, yeah. and all sorts of Holy things. Holy cow, that's not good. And I bought a, um, about half a dozen bags of chook pellets, <laughs> and it was like, I've never seen so much food get eaten so quickly. Yeah. So they must store it up then. Yeah. Um, Hence the fat, I'm guessing. Yeah, big that one is. Yeah. What type of cheeks do they have? Do you have cheeks? Yeah, we're going to have a look at them next. Oh. Yes, oh. I love the babies. They look so cool. So oh. when they hatch and obviously they start yeah. doing their thing, when does the when do they start Don't heading off by themselves? Um, Daddy, could I have one? Dad will look after them until they're 12 to 18 months old, yeah. and then they'll start uh, pairing up in their own right uh, when they're about um, 20. So the dad shows them all the, all the yeah. Well, Mother, mothering, fathering, yeah. parenting. Bits and bobs about eating and don't force yeah. it down his neck. <laughs> they love it. I like, I like the blonde tips on this one. This one's a big one. Be gentle now, mum. Is that a male? This one's got a bit of a <laughs> top knot. I've been mixed up with them now this for nearly fifty years, Stop. and uh, I so still find them quite they endearing. Yes, yeah, like for sure. And they're, and they're sort of a bit like a glove puppet. They're sort of. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They run fast too. So the emus are actually one. omnivores, they'll eat anything. They'd eat, um, if one was to die in the yards, they'd clean up the... Oh, the, wow. And they chase down uh, frogs and lizards and things like that. Yep. Anything to exist. That's really cool. They're definitely so a survival. At any stage in Australia, they reckon that there's 30 million plus kangaroos. There's never more than about a million emus. They're not as prolific as kangaroos. Yeah, right. Because they're predators? I wouldn't um, imagine they'd have many. Uh, no, they can outrun just about anything. But there's a lot of predation of the chicks. Chicks, right. Oh, Mum, look, um, <sighs> Oh, what am I? So, um, am I so tasting? Some more, more backgrounds no, morning, right? And, right. You, and you, get the old, um, oh, well, eh? you get the old story where these fellas, yeah. through um, winter time or whatever, like pick up shawnee things. Yeah. Is that right? The average uh, um, no? uh, It's a lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely story. <laughs> it isn't. It's not, not true, is it? it? Well, <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> it may be, but it, it's a chance. She wants you to hold it. Mm, 10 million. Yeah. So the, the, no. There's lots of little stories about hey, them. Hey, one of which is... Um, hey, uh, they're hurt. on the coat of arms because neither kangaroos nor emus can take a backward step. <laughs> well, they can both walk backwards quite easily. Thanks. <laughs> kangaroos can walk backwards. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, I've seen Sorry? them before. I, sure. have I have had kangaroos. I don't have any at the moment. Whatever. Uh, the other one. Well, the ones the, you've heard that we can put the rest. The um, the other one is the tenth light horse had the big swatch of emu feathers in the thing. Yeah. And that there was a story that back in the day, like Boer War, uh, to prove yourself a good horseman, you had to chase an emu down and pluck its tail feathers out, and then you could wear them in your hat. Yeah. <laughs> right, emus and horses don't like each other and go in the opposite true. directions very quickly. Yes. Wow. With or without the rider. Daddy, oh. <laughs> yes, I know. I've, I've come across that. Hello, Blondie. Hi there. Is that a boy or a yeah, so No, it won't. Yeah. Oh, no. They're beautiful, aren't they? Why? 
I love that sound. It's so... Almost if you're in the bush, it would be really eerie. It's scary, yeah. The only time emus are aggressive is when that the father is about to hatch the eggs out. And we think it's the sheeping of the chicks within the shell just before they hatch that gives him a hormonal response to make him um, protective and alert. Because while he's sitting on his eggs, he goes into a sort of a bit of a doze. Trance, yep. Uh, so that when the babies start cheeping, he cranks up. And it didn't happen, we had sheep stations and that's what I was doing at Waluna. Uh, and it didn't happen to us, but at another station, someone on a motorbike went too close to an emu that was about to hatch his eggs out. The emu chased the guy on the bike and they go much faster than a motorbike. So he dropped the bike and climbed a tree and the emu kicked the petrol tank of the bike in. So they can be aggressive. Very aggressive. <laughs> Situation. They probably. I've got some birds that are over 30 years old. Wow! And they in a zoo or somewhere like that, they can live up to 45 or 50. Wow, that's a long lifespan, isn't it? You're really quiet. Mind your heads. Do they make a baby noise? Yes, they do. Yeah. Little, noise? little whistling. It's described as a multi-tonal whistle. I need to go. I need to go. Baby yeah, emus. Go, just go to the side. Go to the side. Yeah. Uh. Oh, aren't they sweet? And there's no way of telling them apart other than looking at their vent, but even then it's not 100%, I'm told. I, w I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I'd be happy with whatever. Pardon? Look at their vent. You could, apparently you can look at their vent, but even then you, you might not get it right. It's called inverting the cloaca. The cloaca. So at this stage, if they were with their fathers in the bush now and there was a threat, they would just duck into long grass and hide. And I want that one. Yeah, me too. Time, <laughs> and the threats over, the dead comes back and pulls them up and they would get Look at that. Oh, and they're striking everything. Yeah, they are. Yes, I had one the other day. Is that easy, Cat? Yeah. Uh, they can be quite hard. And once they get just a little bit old and they've done, there's no way to the best thing to feed them if you were to keep them right um, i'm feeding them um to start off on start a crumble like chicken start a crumble yeah but you've got to get them off that as soon as you can and you start blending in crushed grain and then uh, yeah so these big birds here they're getting a mixture of um of uh, flakes lupins and flake barley okay do you soak it to make it soft no, no they do that but you must also feed them um, some roughage, some grit, stone. So oh, that's how they grind it up, like yeah, chickens. Okay, yeah. okay. And no, no, this is actual dirt, dirt oh, rocks. Oh, oh, oh this yes. like sharp gravel, sand. Blue gravel, metal. gravel, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you just you hear that little whistle. And so, how old would these guys be? These are about eight weeks. And very soon they'll be losing the stripes on their head and they'll get blackheads. And then they'll get Look at that one. Grey juvenile plumage. <laughs> They're hilarious. I read that it's like vitamin E in the oil or something. Yes. Right. That is stronger than any other naturally occurring vitamin E. That's correct? Right. Yeah. yeah I, I hadn't heard that detail, but. I know that the oil allegedly contains vitamin E. Yes. If you head down to the shop, all right, great. The ground, the funny story about them laying eggs. You think when they laid an egg, they'd scrunch right down on the ground? They drop no, it they from don't. the sky. They stand back on their elbows and they shoot the egg out and go. <laughs> yeah. And go anything up to two meters in front of them, and they go oh, and scrape it in. So Bring the it eggs are pretty tough. Wow. Um. So do you incubate in a normal chicken incubator or is it a special emu no, incubator? It's a special emu incubator. Um, and the temperatures and all that obviously yeah. aren't right in a normal incubator. No. 
Ah, oh, so you couldn't right. do it even if you so wanted to. our big incubator holds 960 egg weeks. And we hatched out in one year 1,500 babies. Far out. Really to do again. Well, come and look at the skin. Isn't that awesome? Look at us. Oh, yeah, I am. That's gorgeous. Because the egg itself is beautifully coloured. Right. There you go. That, that's... Hi uh, guys, this is a normal emu egg. So pretty. When they're full, they weigh about 600 grams, which is like, you know, a kilo, half a kilo of butter. That's, so, I thought it was going to be white. So if you look at this, it's blown. It's got that's the no comparison between a chook egg and an emu egg. And with an emu egg, the whole shell is mostly full of yolk. There's only a little bit of white in there. Wow. Can't Don't drop it. One of my questions is going to be if we could try and incubate, but obviously I don't have the incubator. That would have been a fun experiment. Yeah. Um, and it's 56 days and you've got to turn the egg five times a day. So it's no fun doing that. I have a <laughs> automatic egg turn. It turns yeah. every hour. Right. Too much? Well, I mean, you could modify it. What temperature do they incubate on? Uh, 36. 35 and a half actually. Mine does that, mine sets that. Mum, look how awesome that is. That's the leather that yeah, comes off their legs. Oh, really? yep. That's its foot, look. So when we first started back in the 70s, Oosh. we thought that we were going to make a lot of money out of emu leather and the industry never got big enough to be taken seriously. It this is very is so soft, nice. isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah, but it's yeah. not very tough. Ah. Okay. Um, okay, I would have that sitting up in my room, that would be mad. Mum, look at that. I'll put that. Free range emu oil. If anyone's interested in getting hold of it, call the number because it's amazing. For um, hobbies, craft, uh, fishing lures, cat toys. This is what Hey? And so once it's laid, how long is an egg viable provided it's fertilised? Yeah. Um, well, it can lay dormant for anything up to six weeks, wow. and after six weeks, then the uh, hatchability tails off. But there's nothing to say it's still not viable. You know, ten weeks. Yeah, right. Okay. So, something like that. So Excellent. The emu was very important to our original people, and um, the eggs in particular were one of their few forms of long life, easily transportable food. Yeah. So they could actually gather the eggs up carry them with them and eat them when they wanted to yep. rather than having to consume them there and then. Because yep. so, they stay fresh for a long time. Yeah, they do. And anything up to three months, they're probably still edible. Wow, wow that's amazing. That's um, really good. So also getting back to the Aboriginal people, because emus can run at 80 kilometres an hour, can jump two metres from a standing jump, have very good eyesight and very good hearing, they're very hard to hunt. So the Aboriginals relied on the fact that they're very inquisitive and they would do things like lie on a lie on their backs in a clump of grass and put their legs in the air and the emus couldn't resist going over and having a look and getting speared. Yeah, right. Our best seller. This is our uh, deep rub pain relief cream. Yes. Have a sniff of that. Have you scented yeah. it? What does it smell like? Mm, it's yeah. got, it's about 80% mm. emu oil, has oil of wintergreen, camphor, like menthol, like eucalyptus. Like Oh, yes. Like deep I'm getting some, honey. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. So, how was that, guys? It was pretty cool. I bought, off camera, obviously, pure free-range emu oil. Oh, what was that? Um, 250 mils of it. And it's 100% pure emu oil. There's your ingredients. Pretty cool. And I also bought this deep, deep rub pain relief and what's in that is 50% emu oil, 12% wintergreen, 2% tea tree, 2% cage put. I don't know what that is but I'll look it up and I'll insert the information here. 2% um, menthol, 2% camphor, 2% peppermint and 2% eucalypt and yeah it's made there by the sounds of it. So that is more like muscles, aches and pains and strains but I love that's it's um local to us yeah, injury yeah. that bonnie did to me i'll try and show you if you have a look my skin actually grabs it's like it's fused to the muscle on the inside so i decided i wanted to try and see if this 
can help it heal quicker. I have heard and read some amazing things about it. I'll just put a drop on. I wonder if it smells. It doesn't smell at all. So I assume that they collect this oil from the fat just like we do when we make our own lard and tallow and things because we've killed emu before for eating and the the smell of the fat is so rank it puts you off eating it who's looking at in my opinion obviously some people aren't aren't bothered by it put a bit more it's very very moisturizing i know that much it's pretty amazing yeah no, your scarf. Oh, my scarf. Oh. Whoops, we dropped you guys. <laughs> yeah, where's your scarf? <laughs> We're oiling up our scarves. I got a scarf. I'm not. Scarf. I'm not. I've got some lovely scarves. Have you got any scarves, babe? No, but. I got scarves. Other than emotional scarves. I got some emotional scarves. Scarf. <laughs> I got some, some scarves. Just something, guys. Just smell it. Just, um, Let Dad talk. Just draw forward a bit for me. I just want to see if this is weird or not. What is weird? Draw forward. It looks like the shooter. Yeah, but. Have a look in here. Stop. There's a pink and grey. Stop, stop. Oh dear. There's a pink and grey. Oh, I need to save it. Shouldn't they help it? I need to save it right now, please. No, I, I think that's what they're doing. We hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining us. And I do want to say before I close out this video, a massive happy Father's Day to you, darling. Um, we appreciate everything you do for us. And, um, kids aren't here right now because um, it's the next day and they're at school but um, I did want to say that on this video because this EV farm visit happened on Father's Day that we'd spend some time with Alex at the EV farm just something different it's cool. yeah we learned heaps enjoyed ourselves went home had a lovely Father's Day barbecue with my dad this video if you did please comment below tell us what you thought was great or if you have any more information on emus that we we didn't discuss in the in the video um, give it a big thumbs up if you liked it share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already thanks so much for joining us and until the next video bye for now